This series will attempt to predict and provide a wish list for Frontier's upcoming game, Planet Zoo. The conditions and probability of animals chosen will follow a guideline explained at the beginning of the first video. Be sure to watch the previous videos of this series to keep up to date with the entire wish list and predictions. In this video today, we will be covering deserts and arid regions. Deserts are the most desolate regions of the world, with little or no rainfall contributing to extremely dry conditions. Animals and plants that live here have to be the most adaptable, with little or no naturally occurring water forcing these species to develop habits and evolutionary features to assist them to survive and even thrive in the most inhospitable biome in the world. In North America, the Mojave, Sonora and Chihuahuan deserts join the Great Basin Desert in the north. In South America, the Atacama Desert is the driest hot desert in the world. In Africa, the Sahara is the largest desert. Its southern extent is known as the Sahel Arid Region, whilst the Namib and Kalahari Deserts occur in the south of the continent. In Asia, the Arabian and Syrian deserts cover most of the Middle East, making way for the dry Iranian plateau known as the Kavir Desert. The Karakum to the north meets the Taklamakan and Gobi Deserts below the Eurasian Steppe. Finally, one third of the Australian continent is effectively desert. Early press release information revealed a camel species was part of the roster of the Planet Zoo game. In our first confirmations video, we remarked that the dromedary camel as the most likely candidate. Information has since come in suggesting the camel in the game is in fact double humped, indicating that the species is a Bactrian camel. Bactrian camels are one of three extant camel species in the world, one of two of the double humped camels and alongside the dromedary as a domesticated species. Named for the historical region from whence it came from, the Bactrian camel has been domesticated across an extensive range along the Silk Road from Anatolia to the eastern reaches of the Gobi Desert, where it is noted for its resilience to both cold and hot climates, ability to traverse a multitude of terrain types, and perform brilliantly as a beast of burden. The camel is coloured orangish brown, developing a shaggy, thick winter fur coat that is shed for a sleeker coat in the warmer months. As a result of the domestication, they are not considered for conservation and can be readily found in many zoos. However, there is another double humped species and this is the wild variants of the Bactrian camel. Initially believed to be a feral population of the domesticated Bactrian, through genetic studies, the wild Bactrian camel has been deemed a distinct species of camel that diverged from Bactrian camels about 1.1 million years ago. Therefore, it is the only true wild species of camel in the world occurring in three isolated pockets in the Taklamakan and Gobi deserts in Mongolia and northwestern China. For the most part, the wild Bactrian camel resembles the domesticated Bactrian in appearance, being only slightly smaller, its humps more conical, and its fur sparser and shorter. The wild Bactrian camel is known for its ability to eat snow to provide liquid water in winter, and subsist on water even saltier than seawater. Not even the domesticated Bactrian can tolerate this. The wild Bactrian is thus one of the best desert adapted mammals. It is unfortunately critically endangered, a result of confusion with its domesticated relative, leading to poaching and hybridization. Only 1,400 individuals are present in the wild and with breeding programs established quite recently, there are only 15 animals in captivity and thus very limited zoo appearances. Nevertheless, either the wild Bactrian and domesticated Bactrian camels are the game's supposed double humped camel and thus are inferred or expected species but since both are very similar in appearance, they are interchangeable. Finally, we must also consider the last species of camel, the dromedary. The dromedary camel has not appeared naturally in the wild for close to 2000 years, having been domesticated in the Arabian Peninsula or the Horn of Africa, but today they are universally domesticated from the Western Sahara to the Iranian deserts. Dromedary camels feature a much lighter tan brown colouring that resembles the sandy deserts it is commonly found in. Compared to Bactrian variants, it features much shorter fur as it generally resides in much hotter climates. The camel is used extensively in domestication as it provides food through meat and milk, its fur and hide is used for cloth material, and the animal's durability renders it a valuable pack animal in desert regions. As a result, it has been introduced into domestic use even in Australia, where a feral population has emerged in the continent's desert areas. Dromedaries are very common in zoos as low maintenance animals. They are perhaps not the most interesting animal in the world, but they are still considered somewhat of a core zoo animal. However, with one of the two Bactrian camels already inferred, the dromedary is perhaps not expected, but still extremely likely. 
The Grevy's or Imperial Zebra is the largest living wild horse species of the genus Equus, and the largest but unfortunately most threatened of the three zebra species. The Grevy Zebra is identifiable from its large ears, tall and erect mane, and its empty white patch on its belly. Inhabiting arid and semi-desert areas in eastern Africa, its adaptations allow it to be the only zebra variant to reside in regions with little water. These include the animal being both a browser and a grazer, thus able to consume and extract moisture from many plant varieties. Its ability to seek out and dig for water holes and tolerate dehydration for up to a week also assists in this regard. Often appearing in small herds or even solitary at times, this zebra is the least social of all and occurs in very reduced densities compared to savanna dwelling zebras, probably a result of its more desolate distribution and reduced food in its environment to support large herds. The Grevy zebra is endangered with population estimates of less than 2,500 individuals. Its range in eastern Africa is scattered and fragmented, a result of desertification in these areas, and as a zebra cannot thrive in desert conditions like true desert animals such as camels, they still require periodic water sources, and these are often fenced off for livestock. Despite this, the Grevy zebra is now in many protected areas and its population is stable. Due to its endangerment, it is an appreciated asset in zoos but will struggle to compete with the already confirmed plain zebra and therefore considered unlikely. Believed to be the ancestor of the domestic donkey, the African wild ass is a wild horse species inhabiting various patchy distributions on the African side of the Red Sea. Taxonomically, it features three subspecies, two wild populations in the Nubian and Somali wild ass that inhabit its northern and southern ranges respectively, and the domesticated variety known as the donkey. Although the species as a whole is in no danger of extinction due to captive donkey stocks, its two other wild subspecies are critically endangered due to interbreeding between all three varieties, competition with domestic stocks, and ongoing wild poaching in indigenous and rural communities that often confuse wild specimens for feral donkeys. There are now only about 570 individuals of true African wild ass left in the wild. Its northern Nubian populations in Egypt, Sudan, and Eritrea have not been recorded in the wild since the 1970s and are presumed to be extinct. The Somali populations, however, have been engaged in strong conservation programs in an effort to curb the extinction of the last remaining wild subspecies. And around the same time frame as the Nubian extinction, the first Somali varieties were bred in captivity, initiated by the Basel Zoo in Switzerland. Today, there are about 150 captive individuals in zoos globally, and they are considered a hallmark specimen for animal conservation, similar to the Shavolsky's wild horse. A possibility for an appearance with competition in the Equidae horse family very tough. The sister species is the Asiatic wild ass, more commonly referred to as the onager. The most threatened subspecies is the Persian onager, restricted to two protected reserves in Iran, where it inhabits mountainous desert environments. This subspecies pertains less than 600 individuals in the wild, classified as endangered due to poaching, competition with livestock, and deaths due to increasingly extreme droughts. The last of its sister subspecies, the Syrian wild ass was shot and killed in 1927, and its subsequent extinction has spurred efforts to save the Persian onager with a view to introduce it into the former's range. Already, the Persian onager is breeding in captivity in European and Middle Eastern zoos, whilst the North American population is spearheaded by the Smithsonian. Persian onagers have been introduced into Saudi Arabia, Ukraine and Israel, where they have developed stable populations in arid mountainous steppe regions. Despite this, due to the intense competition in this family group, as stated before, the Persian onager is an unlikely candidate with little differentiating factors from the more critically endangered African wild ass. In our first confirmations video, we mentioned two species of oryxes that were based on inferences made from released Planet Zoo media, the Gemsbok and the East African oryx. Today we cover the rest of the oryx species including the Arabian oryx, a famous desert antelope previously extinct in the wild that was brought back through rigorous reintroduction efforts. Like all oryx species, the Arabian adorns long, slightly curved horns whilst it is easily identifiable from other oryxes through its mostly whitish brown body colouring and black facial markings. The Arabian oryx historically ranged over the Arabian and Syrian deserts, but with its impressive horns, it made a popular trophy hunting target that contributed to aggressive poaching that saw its extinction in the wild by 1972. 
Luckily, there was already a well-established captive population that resulted in widespread breeding programs, notably with the high-profile program by Phoenix Zoo, referred to as Operation Oryx. Starting in 1982, populations were reintroduced into Saudi Arabia and Oman, growing to modern numbers of around 1,000 individuals. Accordingly, the IUCN reclassified the animal from extinct in the wild to vulnerable, the first time such a reclassification has ever occurred. In these regions, the Arabian oryx is extremely well suited to hot sandy deserts, eating a large variety of vegetation. They are also capable of detecting rainfall from long distances, proceeding towards areas with fresh vegetation growth. With some 7,000 individuals today in captivity, the Arabian oryx is a familiar sight in zoos across the world, especially those that feature arid terrain habitats. From a conservation standpoint, this oryx represents a strong candidate, but aesthetically has overlapped with other oryx specimens, a final rating of a possible chance for inclusion. The last consideration of this group is the scimitar or scimitar horned oryx. As their name suggests, their horns are more dramatically curved, resembling the scimitar weapon. Their necks also feature identifiable dark brown coloring that contrasts with their whitish overall body color. Once prevalent over the Sahara Desert, the scimitar oryx was also hunted aggressively as prize targets, with its last herd situated in Chad, Central Africa. The final individual was killed here in 2000, rendering the scimitar oryx extinct in the wild. However, there is a numerous population in captivity numbered in the thousands, with the first reintroductions to its last distribution range in Chad beginning in 2016. This herd of 21 animals have already produced a calf, but with the long-term future of this wild population still in doubt, the oryx's conservation status is yet to be upgraded. The animal has a strong cultural influence in many Saharan cultures, including Egyptian, and its thriving population in captivity has resulted in extensive showcasing in zoos, where their impressive horn growths provide popular spectacles. The scimitar oryx would be in a very likely position to grace the game, particularly as it has a unique extinct in the wild status that makes its inclusion into a conservation conscious game all the more imperative. The Addix, whitish brown colored antelope with spiral shaped horns, are one of the most well adapted desert animals, even more so than oryxes because they can survive without water sources indefinitely, extracting all their moisture from their food or through dew condensation. A special lining in their stomach stores excess water to use in times of dehydration, whilst they further conserve water through concentrated urine. As such, they were very common over large swathes of the Sahara Desert, even the driest and most desolate regions, but overhunting has critically endangered the species. A particularly notable trait of the Addax is its slow movement, rarely breaking into sprints, and as such they make easy targets for not only poachers, but predators such as lions and wild dogs. Today, the Addax is restricted to three resident populations in Mauritania, Niger, and Chad, with less than 500 individuals between them. Over 600, however, are present in zoos with examples in on every continent, and a further thousand more are kept in private collections in USA and the Middle East. This has allowed reintroduction efforts to commence, with two populations established in Morocco and Tunisia. For its status as a well-adapted desert animal, the Addax is publicly popular and would be suitably expected inclusion, especially since it is different enough from Oryx's, the other notable desert antelope varieties. The African Spur Tortoise, known in the pet market as the Salcada Tortoise, is the third largest tortoise species behind the two giant island tortoises. It occurs in a narrow band in the Southern Sahara and Sahel regions of Africa, where their burrowing behavior allows them to survive in desert and arid environments. The tortoise often dig deep burrows to get to underground moisture and uses this shelter to avoid the hottest parts of the day. Their diets are adaptable and can consume a host of grasses and plants, particularly cactus which provide very good moisture content in the desert. They are otherwise an unremarkable tortoise species, but due to their temperament they make suitable pets and offer zoos a less exotic but more common and manageable tortoise specimen. As such, they are widespread for showcase, but their increased demand for captivity has had detrimental effects on wild populations. Their mediocrity compared to the famous giant tortoises would perhaps make their inclusion dubious, but perhaps the possibility is a more suitable rating for such a common zoo animal. One of the best adapted desert antelope groups are the gazelles. We have already covered some savannah dwelling ones, such as the Thompson's gazelle, but their small size and adaptable traits makes them far more distributed across the more arid and desert regions of Africa and Eurasia. 
The Dharma gazelle is a critically endangered small antelope that inhabits the southern Sahara and Sahel regions in Central Africa with a small population in Morocco. Although at a first glance their distribution is widespread, the Dharma gazelle is extremely rare, with one of its subspecies, the Moor gazelle, already extinct in the wild. A small antelope species, it is however the largest of the gazelles. Coloured reddish brown and white, the Dharma gazelle is another desert frequenter that does not require plentiful water sources. Its long legs provide extra surface area to dissipate heat. They are not resistant to drought, however, and they lack the moisture efficiency displayed by oryxes or the adax, and thus, the increasing desertification and intensity of droughts within its range has made its habitat unsuitable. Mechanized hunting of the gazelle coupled with livestock competition in such an intense environment has further depleted resources and this species is now critically endangered. Furthermore, although the Dharma gazelle appears decently in some zoos, no real conservation efforts besides some protected areas have been set up, and this species in particular suffers from lack of adequate political willpower or funding to prevent its demise, a result of its distribution over several unstable African countries. Due to the precarious nature of this animal, it is worth a possibility. Much more common is the Dorcas gazelle, which inhabits most of the Sahara proper and to Israel and the Horn of Africa at its furthest eastern extents. Compared to the Dharma gazelle, the Dorcas gazelle can go virtually their entire lives without ever needing to drink, as they extract moisture efficiently from their food, however will still drink whenever possible. The Dorcas provide major food sources for predators willing to venture into the Sahara, such as cheetahs, lions and hyenas, but they are very agile and speedy in their own right. Zigzag escape patterns are utilised, a common trait with all the gazelle relatives. The Dorcas gazelle, although not as endangered as the Dharma gazelle, still suffers from many of the threats faced by the latter, but perhaps its ability to traverse deep into desolate regions of the Sahara reduces human threats. However, its populations in its more semi-arid regions have been pushed out due to hunting and agriculture and the species as a whole has a declining trend. Pelts and horns are lucrative in markets for decorative and medicinal purposes despite it being protected in many North African countries. The Dorcas is perhaps unlikely compared to the other gazelles and compared to the Dharma would be less preferred due to a more advantageous conservation status. Our last desert gazelle consideration is the Arabian sand gazelle, one of the few gazelle antelopes that roam in Asia as opposed to Africa where they are the most common. In the wild they range across most of the Arabian desert, Syrian desert and as far as the western bank of the Tigris in Mesopotamia, but less than 3000 individuals are spread out over this massive range. As such they are a vulnerable species, livestock competition restricts many of its food and water sources especially since the Arabian sand gazelle is not well adapted to the desert as the Dorcas. Hunting for its meat, horns and pelt across the Arabian Peninsula is rife. On the contrary, an estimated more than 100,000 reside in captivity, whether in hunting reserves, ranches, breeding programs or in zoos, and the animal is somewhat semi-domesticated in many Arabic countries as a form of desert bushmeat. Worth a mention as an Arabian situated gazelle species but otherwise too unlikely to feature in the game. Probably one of the more iconic Sahara animals is the fennec fox, an exclusive desert animal that is the smallest canid in the world. Fennec foxes are distinguishable from their large bat-like ears, of which they use it to dissipate heat, but also assist them in foraging for insects, small mammals and birds. The ears are so sensitive they can detect prey burrowing several meters in the sand. As a desert animal, they show some adaptability with their diet and willingly engage in opportunistic feeding, including for fruits such as dates or eggs from nests made by birds or reptiles. The fennec foxes range over most of the Sahara, south of the Atlas Mountains and west of the Nile River, with a small population encroaching into the Sinai Peninsula. Fennec foxes are social animals and form large, tight-knit groups. They burrow into the sand to produce dens with multiple entrances in many rooms, of which multiple breeding pairs reside in. Because of their small size, they are not persecuted by farmers, but instead they are trapped for the exotic pet trade, of which they are renowned for their tameability and cuteness. Their small size also renders them prey to many other large animals such as eagles, owls, caracals, jackals, hyenas and feral dogs and cats. Despite these threats, Fennec foxes are rather successful and in no real conservational danger, amplified by their high presence in many zoos across the world. The exotic desert canid is sure to be an expected feature as an iconic Sahara species.
The Corsac fox is a Eurasian desert species of fox, primarily inhabiting the Karakum, Taklamakan and Gobi deserts. Like many fox species, it serves as an adept and opportunistic canid that can be found north into the Eurasian steppe and as far east towards the Amur River temperate forests. Their diet consists mainly of small animals and insects but will readily hunt larger rodents and hares, scavenge carrion and consume fruit and vegetation when live prey are unavailable. However, they are only medium sized and in turn are hunted themselves by wolves and birds of prey. They are generally of a stocky build and slow runners. As such, they avoid foliage dense areas or mountainous terrain. Corsac foxes have two seasonal coats. A thicker winter coat is needed as some of its range experiences snow. This fur once made Corsac foxes intensely hunted as it was a popular item in historic pelt trades, but the animal has proven to withstand hunting pressures through their remarkable recovery. As with most foxes, their quick gestation periods and tendency to give birth to multiple young with fairly low mortality rates renders it a very successful animal. Despite this, they are surprisingly not very common in zoos. Their status as least concern would probably yield them as unlikely candidates but worth a mention as an Asiatic desert fox. The Parenti is the largest monitor lizard of Australia and ranked the fourth largest lizard in the world. As such its large size renders it as one of the apex predators of the Australian desert, particularly as the continent lacks any large mammalian carnivores. To fill this niche they are active hunters and surprisingly possess a lot of pace able to sprint on four legs or just on their hind legs. Insects, fish, reptiles, birds and mammals of many sizes, up to small kangaroos and dingoes are preyed upon by the parenti, which is also believed to have a venomous bite. Its claws, strong jaws and whip-like tail are all weapons used to attack prey and deter enemies, and like most monitors, they are naturally aggressive. Cannibalism has also been recorded in this species. Because of their remoteness in the Australian desert, they are hard to see in the wild, which makes them popular assets in zoos as most monitors are, not just because of their large size. Parentes often form a core component of the reptilian roster of many Australian zoos but have recently begun to be exhibited in some others outside the continent. It would thus lend to be a probable animal to be included to bolster the variety of large reptiles. Bilbies are one of the more threatened marsupials of Australia, with the lesser bilby extinct since the 1950s. The greater bilby has a very sporadic range, historically occurring over all the arid regions of the continent but today restricted to increasingly isolated and fragmented pockets. A reclusive and nocturnal creature, they utilize their long tongue in a primarily insectivorous diet that is complemented with fruit and fungi. They extract enough moisture from their food to not need to ever drink water in their entire lives. The bilby has suffered the most because of competition with introduced animals. Whereas introduced foxes, feral cats and dogs hunt the bilby as predators, the greatest effect was the introduction of the European rabbit, which caused major soil erosion preventing burrowing and the rabbit often outcompeted the bilby for food. There is now a national effort to preserve the species and it has seen introductions into many new, protected and fenced off areas. The greater bilby is otherwise a small sized, inconspicuous and unfamiliar animal outside Australia and thus an unlikely desert specimen. The African golden wolf, or sometimes commonly referred to as the Egyptian jackal, is a widespread canid that inhabits the Sahara, Sahel but also ventures into savanna regions in eastern Africa. It was once thought of as an African subspecies of the golden jackal but research in 2015 has since demonstrated this species is more closely related to grey wolves and coyotes, and thus distinct from many canids in this region that were once thought to be close relatives. African golden wolves are typical adaptable desert canids, common in areas lacking water and thus reducing competition from other canids. Anything between dung beetles and Thompson's gazelles are preyed upon by this jackal, which also readily forage for fruits during leaner times. They have a tendency to target young fawns and calves of gazelles and wildebeest during the birth season. Despite seemingly high competition against this species from hyenas, wild dogs and other jackals, the golden wolf performs well in the wild and its numbers are abundant enough to warrant a low concern status. Overlap with many other canids, especially the more interesting savanna species, will not make this species likely, but it is appreciated enough to be a possibility. Perhaps some of its more distinguishable subspecies such as the Egyptian wolf or Senegalese wolf can be considered instead. 
Our final consideration for this biome is the Arabian wolf, a desert adapted subspecies of the grey wolf Canis lupus. Although grey wolf subspecies are already unlikely because the species as a whole is already confirmed, the Arabian wolf deserves mention because of its perilous situation in the wild and one that inhabits very desolate regions. Historically, the wolf ranged over most of the Arabian Peninsula, but was intensely persecuted for preying on livestock. Since then, it has been pushed into three isolated regions. The Sinai Israeli population is the most sensitive, with around 100 to 150 individuals left. The greatest contingent reside in Oman and Yemen, with the wolf mostly extirpated in Saudi Arabia, but rogue individuals have still been spotted. Conservation of this wolf subspecies is problematic as an increase in numbers poses problems for local farmers. However, the UAE and Egypt are performing captive breeding programs for release into protected areas away from agriculture. Overall though, the Arabian wolf is another subspecies that would still be unlikely because of its parent species confirmation. That ends our predictions and wish lists for these biomes. Vote in the poll for the next biome selection and subscribe for the next video as we await the release of Planet Zoo. Catch you guys later.